What are your dreams trying to tell you? Dream Interpretation 101 right now. What is up, Alien Army? I am I'm Oculus, the alien, alien next door, next door. purveyor oh, of esoteric, esoteric lore. lore. Today's video is going to be all about dreams, common dream meanings, how to tell a dream is precognitive, and what do lucid dreams mean. Now before I get into dream meanings and how to interpret them, let me start by saying that if you wish to explore your dreams further and start recalling them more often, definitely start writing them down as soon as you wake up. Now, some people remember their dreams vividly and some people don't. If you would like to start remembering your dreams every night, you can set an intention prior to going to sleep to have a dream that you remember. Upon waking, you may realize that you might have had several dreams during the night and you might want to start writing them all down at first so that you're directing your conscious and subconscious mind to be in the state of remembering your dreams. Sometimes with multiple dreams you might recall one more vividly than the other and this might have a special significance in the meaning of that particular dream. So if a dream stands out when you're writing it down, also write down the emotions that you experience whilst having that dream. Write down the scenery, where were you? Someplace familiar? Someplace unknown to you? Who were you with in the dream? All of these factors may be significant in understanding what the dream means. Now, sometimes we have dreams about something that we did earlier that day. It might be a scene from a movie we watched. It might be a conversation with a friend that we had. Sometimes it might even be about a meal that we had prior to going to sleep. If you notice this type of dream, you don't need to concentrate so hard on trying to interpret its meaning. These dreams are fairly common as well, but they typically, most of the time, don't mean anything that significant. I like to refer to them as the subconscious replay. Just decluttering and compartmentalizing the memories gathered from earlier in the day. Imagine it like organizing your music in playlists. The subconscious mind will bring up the memory during dream time to evaluate its proper file folder in your psyche. So, now that you're intending to remember your dreams and you're writing them down, let's talk about how every body dreams differently. We are all unique and beautiful individuals, so of course, we're all going to experience dream time in different ways. Some people dream in color, some people dream in black and white, some people rarely remember their dreams, and some people have multiple vivid dreams per night. No one way of dreaming is set in stone, and some of you may even dream differently every night. This is completely normal. If you are intending to recall your dreams more often and experience more vivid dreams, try sleeping with a healing crystal under your pillow or above your headboard. Some great ones for dream work are scolocyte, silanite, amethyst, sodalite, moldavite, and lapis lazuli. What are the most common dreams? at least according to Google. Some of you might be familiar with common dreams of the collective if you've ever searched for them online. The most common ones seem to be flying, falling, being naked, teeth falling out, water, fire, being chased, money, sex, people, animals, and two of my personal favorites that I'm going to add as a bonus are zombies and subways. And yes, I really did add zombies and subways because I personally have had a lot of dreams about these topics and I find them to be very spiritual and transformative in nature. I'll get into those in a bit, but let me start first with the ones that I previously mentioned. All right, we got our common dream symbols. Now, what do they mean? Dream interpretation can be literal or metaphorical. If you were dreaming about a tiger chasing you and you went to a zoo recently or watched a show about tigers, then it might just be your subconscious mind doing some housekeeping with that memory. 
Remember what I said about subconscious replay? Your subconscious just might be replaying it because it's cleaning house and organizing your memories. Resurfacing them so they can be tucked away under a certain category of memories. If, however, you didn't just watch a show or visit a zoo, then this type of dream might have more of a metaphorical vibe to it. What do tigers represent to you? Do you appreciate their power? Do you find them pleasing to look at? Are you fearful of them? Was the tiger friendly? Was it talking to you? Remember, this is dream time where tigers can talk. Why was the tiger chasing you? Was it trying to deliver a message to you? Or were you trespassing on the tiger's property in the dream? Take note of all of these things because they will all help you with interpreting the dream. And most importantly, how did you feel? when the tiger was chasing you. Were you running scared or were you guys playing tag? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the feeling that you're having during the dream is one of the most important factors because remember, we are dealing with the subconscious mind which communicates messages through emotions. Since we're on the topic of animal appearances during dreams. One thing that I like to do when I dream of a particular animal is to research the meaning of that animal, both metaphysically and also as a spirit guide. A lot of times doing this helps me to understand the significance of the presence of that animal in the dream. Flying, falling, being naked, or being chased. Now, in a nutshell, if you are flying in your dreams, this can mean that you are soaring to great heights in your waking life and that your dreams will soon come true. Dreams, dream, come true. Okay, never mind. If you are falling in your dreams or are being chased, during your waking life, you may feel overwhelmed or out of control in some area in your life. It may also mean that you're trying to avoid something. Being naked in a dream can symbolize a fear of vulnerability in your waking life or insecurity about being exposed for something. Teeth falling out, money, and sex on the next Geraldo. I'm totally joking. On the next Oculus Hour. Here we go. These dream meanings may imply your waking life physical circumstances. Teeth falling out may indicate a feeling of insecurity or being unable to voice your opinions in a healthful way. It can also indicate a concentration of energy on your physical appearance. Dreaming about money can indicate a need to focus more on your physical resources in your waking life, and it may also indicate financial scrutiny or a huge windfall of abundance that's about to take place. Dreaming of sex can be taken quite literally, though many times dreaming about sex can indicate your sense of personal power or lack thereof in your waking life. Water, fire, animals, people. Dreams about water are typically a metaphorical representation of your emotions. Huge waves indicate extreme emotion. A placid lake may symbolize a sense of calm or emotional apathy or tranquility. Also take note of the consistency of the water. Is it murky or filled with debris? That may mean some stagnant emotions are hindering you in your waking life. If the water is clear and inviting, this indicates stability, emotional security, and joyfulness. Dreaming about fire can indicate that a situation in your waking life is causing you to have unnecessary anger that needs to be released. Fire represents swift change of outdated paradigms and burning to ashes that which is no longer serving you. Dreaming of fire may also indicate illumination and purification of some circumstance in your waking life. Having dreams about an animal, can sometimes be a spirit guide or guardian angel attempting to communicate with you. The symbology of the animal, which we talked about before, can help you to figure out what message spirit is trying to communicate to you. This also applies to marine life. And keep in mind that marine life has more to do with your emotional nature 
because they are representative of water energy. Now, seeing people in your dreams can have a plethora of different meanings. Before I get into this, did you know that every face one sees in their dreams is a face that one has seen before at some point during their waking life? Yep, because the subconscious mind stores everything. Even the strangers which appear in your dreams are faces that you have seen before somewhere in your physical reality, even if just briefly. What about if it's a person that you know? Well, again, let's look at the context of the dream. It may be a mundane memory surfacing during the subconscious mind sweep. This is true, especially if you're doing something random like eating ice cream and you recently spoke to this person about eating ice cream. If this is a person you know, but you haven't seen them or spoken to them in a while, dreaming of them may indicate that they were thinking of you recently or that they're about to contact you in some way. It might also mean that you may have some unresolved emotions regarding that person, especially if the context of the dream was not so pleasant. Now, we could talk all day long about seeing different types of people in your dreams and what they mean, and I am going to make a more in-depth video on this topic, so stay tuned for that if that's something that you're interested in. But getting back on track here, you can notate your dreams regarding specific people and write down the date of the dream to see if they do contact you soon after that. Doing this can help you to establish which dreams of yours are precognitive and how to recognize them. Zombies and subways. These two dream types are ones that I have much experience with and I personally find them to be good indicators of subconscious energy that needs to be released or is being released or is going to be released in the near future. Zombies are indicators of something old, dead, or outdated which is running in the background of your subconscious mind but is no longer serving you. If you think about it, a zombie tends to be mindless in nature and dreaming of one or a few can indicate a subconscious belief system that you have running on autopilot in the background that you aren't yet aware of. Personally, when I dream of zombies, I take it as a sign that an old paradigm is about to be shifted in my psyche and replaced with a more beneficial one. Dreaming of subways or the underground, however you want to call it, whatever it's called, where you are, a subterranean railway system, is also indicative of subconscious emotions that one may not yet be aware of. They are buried underground, if you will, deep within the subconscious mind. Dreaming of subways, in my experience, is similar to dreaming of zombies, in the essence of hidden programs. However, subway dreams tend to be more along the lines of shadow work, which needs to be integrated into the psyche, while zombie dream issues tend to be more obvious during the waking life. To interpret a zombie or subway dream, follow the same guideline as you would interpreting any other dream and be mindful of small clues as to what type of issue in your waking life requires transformation. For instance, a zombie may be chasing you, but it may be holding a vibrant flower in its hand, which would indicate that you're about to step out of that dead programming and experience a fresh breath of life. Again, it's important to study the emotions you felt whilst participating in the dream. Precognitive dreams. We touched briefly on precognitive dreams. Now let's dive a little deeper. A precognitive dream can occur in many different ways. There may be a specific event played out in the dream that later happens during waking life. You may see a name, place, or sequence of numbers that you see later on during your waking life. And you may also receive messages during dreams that may answer your waking life questions. For example, you are dreaming and during the dream you hear a voice giving you the specific answer that you need right then. 
Or you may be dreaming and see a statement written out somewhere within the dream, which ends up being the solution to something that is going on within your waking life. These are all indicators of having had a precognitive dream. Now, you may have a dream about a white dove on your windowsill, and then three days later, a white dove really does appear on your windowsill. Take note of these occurrences in your dream journal and notate the time frame betwixt having the dream and seeing it play out during your waking life. Notate the feelings that you experienced in the dream and notate how you felt when you saw it play out in your waking life. Once you've recognized about three or more precognitive dreams, take into consideration the similarities you recognize the most amongst all of these dreams. You may notice a pattern such as when I see a rainbow in my dream, I see a certain number, which then later on becomes significant in my waking life. Now you will recognize that seeing a rainbow in your dreams is an indicator that the dream may be precognitive. Of course, you'll notice your own specific nuances in your dreams, but they will feel like little mini aha moments when you piece them all together. Lucid dreams. What are lucid dreams? This is a dream where you are aware that you are dreaming while you're in the dream. You're aware that you're in control of things that happen during the dream and you find you can control the dream by simple orchestration of your will. For example, you may be driving and you become aware that you're dreaming. And so you take the initiative to will the car to start flying in the dream. You can literally manipulate the circumstances of your dreams, which in my opinion is what makes lucid dreaming so much fun. Side note, this is also an important esoteric concept for understanding how our physical reality is a dream and our higher self is the dreamer. But you know, that's another story. Now there are a few steps that you can find online to induce a lucid dream, however, I personally never used any of them because they didn't resonate with me. A popular method, you know, just to put it out there if you want to try it, it might resonate with you, is to set the intention to have a lucid dream prior to going to sleep and then putting on headphones that are playing binaural beats. You then set an alarm to wake you up approximately six or seven hours after you go to sleep. And when the alarm goes off, wake up for about 30 minutes to an hour and concentrate on any dreams that you may have just had. If you didn't have any dreams that you can remember, simply concentrate on any dream that you've had, no matter how recent ago it was, that you can remember. Then go back to sleep and see if you're able to have a lucid dream then. Now, this is a popular technique. I have read that sometimes it can take several tries of doing this. I, like I said, I personally never have tried this, but I mean, the, honestly, the, the main reason why I never tried it is because... I like my sleep! I don't like setting alarms! All right, okay, that's why. But you know, if it feels right to you, why not try it out? The times that I've had lucid dreams were actually times that I didn't try to have any. I've been in a deep sleep in a very relaxed state and they just happened on their own. So you can always just get into a calm place of mind and emotion prior to going to sleep and then simply intend to have a memorable lucid dream. Sometimes, you know, the simplest stuff works the best and it might work for you. So that's going to wrap up today's esoteric topic here. Uh, we will chit chat again soon. Let me know if you tried the lucid dreaming technique, uh, you know, uh, I'm curious to hear if it works just because I personally never tried it, but uh, that's it for today. I am Oculus, the alien next door. Chit chat again soon. Peace, good vibes, and namaste. Blessed because you are.